Yeah, it's a video about a car park, but it's going to be good, I promise. It's the late 40s, and the famous disagreement is over, and Germany bombed the shit out of us. Houses are in short supply, and so is money, because it turns out going to war is quite expensive. In 1946, the government put in place the New Towns Act. This piece of legislation would allow the government to allocate large areas of land for new towns to be built on. The idea was is that the New Towns Act would solve the country's housing crisis, and by the mid-1950s, the scheme was well underway, and it gave us wonderful towns such as Basildon, and Crawley, and Stevenage? Stevenage was the first of these new towns to be built, but who actually cares? These new towns and estates needed to be built quickly and cheaply, and they were. With building materials still scarce and expensive following that pesky war, construction teams needed an alternative, so started to use the latest in modern but still cheap construction material, concrete. Concrete was readily available, just throw some water and sand together and you're sorted, I'm sure. But overall it was cheap and easy to form into many interesting shapes. And what came out of this was brutalist architectural design or brutalism. A style that emerged in the 50s when construction with concrete was becoming the new standard and architects were looking to take advantage of concrete's unique properties. And it wasn't just the UK, this style caught on all around the world leading to some very interesting building designs. But what is brutalism? If any website will know, it's architecture.com. They say brutalism is a style with an emphasis on textures, materials and constructions producing highly expressive forms. The term brutalism was coined by architect Alison Smithson, who was describing a house that had been built in Soho, London. Alison, along with her partner Peter, would not long after go on to design many brutalist structures, their first being the Smithton School in Hunstanton, which opened in 1954. By the 1960s, house building schemes were well underway all over the country, peaking at 400,000 houses being built in one year. In more recent times, 2019 was considered a pretty good year for house construction, with 170,000 properties being built. I am getting to the point point of the video, we're nearly there. Leicester can trace its roots as far back as a long time ago, and as such wasn't part of the government's New Towns Act. However, Leicester, like many towns, still needed more housing and didn't manage to escape the brutalist architects of the 60s and 70s with such wonderments as this being built. And this. And this. And this. But one of the first brutalist structures to arrive in Leicester was this, the Lee Circle car park. Yes, it's a car park and we're going to talk about it. Firstly, just look at it. It's incredible, but horrid. I think I like it. It opened in 1961 as Automagic Car Park and was one of the first fully automated car parks to open in Europe using a coin-operated barrier system. It had space for 1,050 cars and its shape is described as a rotunda double helix, whatever that is. In any case, it's certainly unique. You'll find this car park of joy right in the middle of Leicester and it's clear that it was built at a time when the car was king and indeed, this car park was seen as a solution to traffic congestion. The then parliamentary secretary to the Ministry of Transport said, the multi-story car park was a significant step step forward in helping tackle traffic issues around cities. You see, until this point, to do your shopping, you'd drive into town, park up wherever, and then nip into the butchers, then off to the grocers and the haberdashers, etc. And as car ownership was on the increase, parking became a bit of a problem, as did congestion on the roads. But it seems Tesco thought they might have the solution. Along with the car park, a large Tesco store was opened on the ground floor and integrated into the car park. Park your car and walk in was the slogan. You could park up, walk in, do your shopping, and then have the Tesco staff carry a bag to the car, saving the need to drive into town and visit all of the various shops cluttering up the inner city roads. When the Tesco store operated here, you'd have pulled your car out the car park, round this access road, right down to the storefront, and the staff would load your car up for you. They called it a supermarket, and when the Tesco store opened, it was the largest supermarket by floor space in Europe at 24,000 square feet. And it's got everything from every brand from A to X. It's got everything and every brand from A to X. It was the first store to operate a self-service system where you picked your own shopping using one of the provided trolleys or baskets before heading to a checkout to pay. What about these ones, darling? Absolutely not. I like linens, I like linens. A completely new concept at the time for shoppers, and I very much doubt it caught on. The shopping couldn't be easier. The Tesco store closed in the early 80s, but the car park is still going strong, although it has perhaps seen better days. There have been many calls for it to be demolished, whilst many others think it's an important part of Leicester's history and should remain. But what do you think? Manky addict infested concrete sh at all, or beautiful modern yet historic design? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more films from the Auto Shenanigans production house, be sure to press subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any future videos. Tatty bye!